Walking around London, it's still possible to see how the 17th century was a defining moment in British history, a period of intense political debate, but also of artistic brilliance. Here we are in the direct center of London, the noisiest and the busiest place in London. And what do we find? Charles I himself in a grand soaring equestrian in bronze. It's London's oldest bronze sculpture created by Charles I's favorite sculptor, the imported Frenchman Hubert Lassure. Charles I dissolved Parliament in 1629, embarking on his so-called personal rule of the 1630s. And it was just at this time, at the beginning, of his personal rule, this sculpture was commissioned. And if we look closely, I think we can see why. There's an intense focus on details in armor, even down to the rippling of the leather boots. But in contrast, the face has this almost mask-like quality without individuality or detail. As we can see, he obviously could do detail. So why doesn't he? Well, I think that's precisely the point. The importance is not psychological character. It's not a man, but a monarch. That is, it's not inner life, but public life. And if we look then how he holds the horse back with a light touch, yet in complete control, this powerful beast, veins bulging, is in complete harmony with its master, an obvious association with Charles I and his subjects, it's saying, we don't need parliament. I'll rule with a deft hand. In the 1640s, the situation finally became untenable. The accusations of popery and absolutism couldn't have been helped by this equestrian that ultimately derives from the famous ancient sculpture of Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor at the center of the Catholic world in Rome. A sculpture that brought up thoughts of imperial Catholic rule was not what Protestant England had in mind for its monarch. All that was bubbling under the surface until it finally erupted into civil war in 1642. The sculpture was then ordered to be melted down for use as ammunition. Charles I himself was forced down from his throne. And on the 30th of January, 1649, Charles I walked out from under the Rubens ceiling at the Whitehall Banqueting House, depicting the apotheosis of his father, James I, a statement about the divine right of kings. It was the last art Charles I would ever see. And he would step out from that very room onto the scaffold, wearing two shirts to keep warm, so not to shiver, lest anyone think he was afraid, and was thereupon executed. But the great equestrian of Charles I survived. It wasn't melted down during the Civil War, but the man entrusted to melt it down hid it and preserved it. With the restoration in 1660, Charles II acquired the sculpture and he put it here where we can still see it today. And at the same time, he had this new plinth commissioned. Of course, it was new then. Now it's weathered. It's from 1675. But he also had Joshua Marshall carve this wonderful high relief of the Stuart coat of arms flanked by two putti holding palm leaves representing the martyrdom of Charles I, who was considered since 1660 a martyr in the Church of England. And what is a martyrdom but a victory over death, and we see the victory wreath held by the two Puti, because it's not just a restoration, but it's a resurrection. Now this is the best part of the sculpture. Behind me, Charles I looks directly down Whitehall to the Whitehall Banqueting House, outside of which he was executed in 1649. Charles II put that there specifically so we never forget. And this is one of the most brilliant, if not the most brilliant positioning in the entirety of Baroque sculpture, showing us a direct urban dialogue with the past. But how did this sculpture live on in the future? Charles II had his own bronze equestrian erected at Windsor Castle in 1679, and it looks even more obviously like the Marcus Aurelius. Subsequently, many British monarchs sought to take part 
in that great equestrian tradition. <laughs>